Good morning, and welcome back to Painting with Kev. <laughs> in this color experiment, actually it's not an experiment, it's art, sorry. In this assignment, we're going to experiment with color. And to do that, we need paint. So, our first part, we're going to experiment by just covering an entire sheet with color. And there's no real rules here except painting each other up. You can't do that. You're just going to experiment, lay the color down, just see what cover an entire large sheet of white cartridge paper with paint. And I kind of like to let the students go and kind of use their own technique and do whatever they can do within reason, of course, to get it covered beautifully. There, I've successfully covered the entire sheet. But another little technique called a dry brush where you get mostly paint, not too much water, and then you can go over top of areas that you've done. And that's where you get more line, less blending. There it is again. And this will work well for the technique we're doing today. So lots of line, a little dry brush here and there. There, I've successfully covered the entire sheet. But another little technique called a dry brush where you get mostly paint, not too much water. And then you can go over top of areas that you've done. And that's where you get more line, less blending. There it is again. And this will work well for the technique we're doing today. So lots of line, a little dry brush here and there. Is this thing on? Yes, it is. All right, now you've got your first step done. Not the finished product yet. It's a great opportunity now to chat with your kids and brainstorm maybe about things that are colorful and we chose to use kind of a wild animal theme so we took some time brainstorming to see what is a colorful animal listed them on the board so students have something to choose from so i've got my animal kind of in my head and i'm going to take my finished work and turn it over not quite dry yet you'll probably want to wait till yours is completely dry and you're going to begin drawing parts of your animal. You're not going to draw the whole animal. You want to have just the individual parts. I was thinking of a bright, how about a parrot? Does that sound good? Yeah, she like. So, thinking about a parrot, it's going to have the individual parts, like the feathers. So it doesn't matter where you draw them or what they look like, but I'm going to begin to just draw the different feather shapes. These are probably wing feathers, aren't they, in your beautiful world. And this is just a guide to be cut out later. Doesn't matter where you put them. In fact, some people think the surprises are more fun. I've got some feathers, but I need the body part, so let's just draw a nice oblong, doggone bird body. There we go. There's his body. So here's the bird's body. There's his little head. And there's his. Let me check a look and see what we got. Ah, beautiful. And then we can do all the little bird parts to be reassembled later. The, you'll have a better effect if you draw more individual little parts. The more the better. So you want to just kind of go kind of crazy with the parts. 
versus parts. So now, now we got them laid out, you want to individually cut out the parts and reassemble them later. And that's when the happy surprises come. When they're all reassembled, you can begin to see uh, our colorful bird is taking shape. He's ready to fly away. Here's his head. And you, I know what you're thinking, that doesn't look like a head. Let me just finish him off. Well, that is a little beak. Oh, look at it. Looks like he's hungry too, doesn't it? <laughs> now, you can, you can see he doesn't have any feathers on his head, and I haven't drawn any there. Well, you've got the license of just cutting out shapes as you see fit. If the kids are comfortable, they don't have to draw everything out. And I even at this point allow them to look at the colored side to cut it, because they may be looking for a certain color that's going to go with. Ah, look at it. So you can see it is starting to look like a little colorful bird. And I may want to mix up some of the other colors, and I can do that. So now I can look at the colored side. I'm not so concerned now with cutting out the shapes. I can now get any color I want. Uh, and I don't know where I'm going with this, I'll be honest. And, oh, come back here. So it's starting to take shape. It's a good... Ouch, I'm sitting on the ledge here. It's a good time to share, because maybe your friend's got a color that you don't have, so we kind of combine our scraps, and we have a little scrap community, and we can get together. I know on mine I want leaves, because he's probably in a tree. He's certainly not flying. So I don't have brown, so I borrow brown from a friend and say, can I borrow your brown? And I said, so I'll fall a little apart. You'll notice no glue has touched my art yet. I'm laying it all out, putting things exactly where I want, making changes. See, I don't like that there. Too much junk in the trunk, so I'm going to pull him down there. And you can move it around and play with it. You don't have to, you know, glue it all down and then have to unglue it later. And the final product, once glued down, it'll look lovely in your fridge at home, i got to tell you. I don't know what you want me to say about it. See, Mom likes mine best. 